What's up guys? Welcome back to another video and today is episode two of our overclocking series. So right now we are in a game called Monster Hunter Rise and we are on high preset on the settings and we are rocking a stock back plate with all stock presets. That's it. This is completely stock, as stock as it gets except for, you know, a so, uh, few of the mods that we've made. Including the thermal pad mod, but the thermal pad mod doesn't really do anything for a stock Steam Deck. It is intended for a modded Steam Deck. But what we're doing is we're going to see how well this game runs stock without any overclocks. So, one thing our, we really want to do is running through this town, we see about anywhere between... We jump to 60 running back. So the most demanding spot is just running across this bridge. We see frames of 50 to 51. Then we run back, we'll get 60. Then we're gonna run through again to double check what we got there. And it's still 51, 50, mostly 51. We're gonna run back again just to see kind of what our average frame rate is as we run through here. I would say 51 on average. It's not holding 52, nor is it sitting on 50. We'll do it one more time. Um, yep, about 51. Roughly 50, 51. Um, we do see it peak at 52 at times, but that's very, very short-lived. But it's running great, just running through here pretty well. 51. 51 frames. So that's our baseline 51 frames. Like I said, there is no overclocks to this um steam deck yet uh what we're gonna do next is we are gonna we're gonna power down and we are gonna overclock our steam deck so i've been able to overclock this steam deck quite freaking well we were able to push it to 28 watts with a 4000 on the cpu and a 2200 on the gpu uh with pretty good temps but during that mod we were rocking our jsox backplate with our ventilation mod, which worked immensely well uh, while cooling the external part of the Steam Deck with a 4500 RPM Noctua fan. And th this combination worked great. We got about 85 degrees in my testing. For today's testing, we're going to be just using a stock Steam Deck, but the JSOX black plate included. But before we do that, we are gonna do a slight overclock. So one thing I want you guys to know about overclocking, um, it once you get your good balance of megahertz and gigahertz on your CPU and GPU, you don't need to mess around with them anymore. Once it's stable, it's pretty much stable. Uh, I've, I've trusted along among like several titles and my clocks are all stable. What is different is your TDP. The higher the TDP, the more you can get out of the GPU. So that becomes the main issue is how hot your Steam Deck is. I know for a fact that this Steam Deck can run at 20 watts. Uh, without thermal throttling. So we're going to do the same test we just did with a 20 watt TDP and a 4000 on the CPU and 2200 on the GPU. Poppy here. If you like this type of content, go ahead, hit that like, hit that subscribe. And if you all want, do it for me. Do it for, for her, her. Look at her. Do it for her. Okay, guys, we are back in here in Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, you'll notice that we have our JSOX cooler on because this room is very hot today. It is 30 degrees, which is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for our Fahrenheit boys. But And it's this Steam Deck can't keep up. So we added our JSOX cooler to help cool things down. Fans is tilted at 7,000 RPM internally and max 7,000 RPM on the JSOX cooler. And that's only holding us at 81 degrees. All right, so we're going over the same bridge and what we can see with our overclocks. So before we were pretty much averaging 50-51. Now we're closer to 53-54, but we'll do a couple more passes. 
54, 53, 55. Definitely a lot better. It's about a 10% increase, I would say, roughly, in uh, performance. But then again, look at our temperatures. We're peaking in the 85 at moments. It's running very, very hot now. And we're only at a 20 watt TDP, which is crazy. So a stock Steam Deck in this room climate could not even hold a 20 watt TDP. You'd have to bring it down to maybe 18 watts, maybe. But I just want to show you, like, we are getting about 5% better. I mean, excuse me, 10% better performance. But is it really worth it at this point? Does this look that much better? Uh, I don't know. Almost 10%. Let's go over one more time. 54, 55. Then it peters down as we get here. So I would, I would say it's roughly, roughly, you know eight percent better i would let's just say eight percent better for a 20 watt uh tdp five increase on that four thousand megahertz on the gigahertz on the cpu and for 2200 megahertz on the gpu which is very lackluster increases when you think about it because we don't it doesn't look that much better than it did before and we're still hitting some lows here and there all right guys so loading back into monster hunter rise we're at 18 watt tdp no uh jsox cooler this time same overclocks 4000 on the cpu and 2200 on the gpu going over the bridge we are getting about 52 frames where we were getting 51 to 50 in our stock um configuration uh, 51 there so peaking i would say 52 53 our temperatures are rising at 8 to 87 um, remember it is 30 degrees in the room it's very warm today and i wouldn't be surprised if we peak into the high 80s in this testing we're just gonna run around town a little quick heat really heat up the steam deck 52 53 still roughly rough just shy of what we were getting earlier notice our clocks though we are peaking towards what our stock clocks are on our cpu but our gpu we are very much so not even getting that high you know 1550 is as high as i've seen it i remember we're overclocked to 2200 megahertz um and we're not even seeing that and our temp is slowly 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 rising 52.53. So the big takeaway today, guys, is the fact that overclocking your Steam Deck is definitely a good thing to do if you have the cooling overhead. You cannot, I would highly recommend not overclocking your Steam Deck if you are rocking a stock Steam Deck. You need an external cooler or an external cooling mod uh maybe the jsox black plate with a vent mod very good solution uh maybe one of the the compromise mod would be a great solution uh, you can get that at diypoppy.net um though you need an external cooling mod right and the reason for that is because the only way to really get the overclocks that your steam deck can handle is by increasing the tdp but when you increase the tdp your thermal load goes through the roof you just heat up instantaneously with our jsox backplate with our thermal pad mod and our ventilation mod we were able to push the Steam Deck in a 20 degree room, which is I think around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We were able to push TDP to 28. And we still there, we only got about a 15% increase. Overall, definitely not kind of worth it considering that everything is running fairly pretty freaking hot and at the point where it's about to throttle. Um, but we did turn that down to 26 watts. And in this game, we were playing Miles Morales. And uh, we got really good temperatures. We're in the low to mid 80s on that one, which is definitely 
uh, a safe place in my opinion for the steam deck uh, and we still got that 10 to 15 percent increase in uh, performance overall but in this testing today you saw that a stock backplate definitely definitely has some issues when it comes to cooling your steam deck when you have overclocks uh, uh definitely not worth it honestly in my opinion because you can overclock the hell out of it but the fact is you can't increase the tdp without putting too much thermal load on your system obviously if you're in a colder climate or a cooler room than i am in you can push that tdp probably you could run that 20 watt fairly well so definitely your climate definitely has a big part to play in that this today was very worst case scenario but i really want you to keep in mind that if you don't have that thermal capacity to dissipate large amounts of heat i would highly recommend just not overclocking your steam deck because you're only going to put more load in a system that cannot really handle it for very very minimal gains and when i say very very minimal gains if you saw our original test we're getting around that 50 to 51 walking across a bridge and our final test increasing the all our overclocks the 18 uh watts on the tdp uh the 4022 like every other test on the cpu gpu we only get uh, maybe two extra frames so that would be uh barely a five percent increase not even five percent increase uh for so much more faff like we got a fans are going full tilt things like that uh we, we are really really pushing the system to uh really uncomfortable s settings and uh in in an area where it is more risk to potentially break your steam deck so i that's what i want to say so if you're planning on overclocking your steam deck guys and you're rocking stop stock steam deck i would highly recommend not doing it you're better off getting a jsox backplate or and or doing the ventilation mod which is cutting the hole right here don't forget you should do the thermal pad mod when you do the ventilation mod and you should do the thermal pad mod if you are rocking the jsox backplate but other than that guys um thank you for watching please be careful overclocking your steam deck as you can see this thing can get very very hot and it is a very expensive piece of equipment so keep it safe guys thank you so much for watching hopefully this video was informative uh for you whether or not you were on the fences on overclocking your steam deck i just want you guys to be aware that um i've done a lot of testing and cooling is everything when it comes to overclocking because this bad boy gets really hot and these stock components with the stock backplate is very not conducive to overclocking